How are we then, good people? Today, I'm going to talk about my uh, time as a degenerate drug user. It's going to be a short one because uh, I kept it pretty clean throughout my youth years as of yet. But um, yeah, I'm going to get into this. Oh, yeah, for those that have noticed that I've been a little less consistent this week, that's because I was having a little holiday, I say holiday, tent holiday, I caught a bit of a tan on my face and arms, in hindsight I probably should have whipped my t-shirt off a bit, but you live and learn, but yeah, I was talking to me pal this morning, he's phoned me up at 9 o'clock in the morning, for some reason, off his, um, off his nut, he'd been, no, he weren't off his nut, like, but he'd been on it the night before and that, bit of MD and it was talking like but it got me thinking yeah that's a good little uh, topic for a video to talk about times that I've done it and you know other things like festivals and a couple of raves that I've been to man but yeah I stayed away from all that for the longest time and to be honest what really like done it is like me getting introduced to the raves it's come from my fucking year group going off to fucking uni and getting a taste for that life sort of thing then they're showing me other pal who's connected with them and then eventually down the line he forces me to go to a rave with him and uh, I was just going to go see what the crack was maybe have a few beers you know but I had a strong strong thing I was going there like no drugs I ain't about that life you know I had pride in it a strong pride that like I'm 20, I think I was 19 going on 20 and I never touched nothing like that in my whole life no coca, no MD, no nothing, no ketamina just the marijuana, I didn't even really like to drink beer at the time just letting my dog in yeah but my mate invites me to a rave and this is, might I add, I'd say my longest part of new youth since I was in a uh, year 2 Nursery, whatever you want to fucking call it. So I've known this geezer going on 20 years. And that's saying something. At the time, say 16 years, whatever. But I knew the kid a long time. So yeah, sound for that. My longest, oldest friend corrupting me, taking me to the rave and showing me how the other people get down and that. And how I've ended up consuming my first ever drugs, you ask. So the night is underway. Everyone's enjoying themselves. And my pals are enjoying themselves a bit more than others. And I think, I don't know what it was, call it the old Piero pressure or whatever, but uh, my mate said to me, like, oh, have you tried this? And I'm like, nah, still, I ain't, I ain't bothered, mate, I'm happy. But then I've popped off, gone to the toilet, and I've come back, they were looking at me, they were looking at me funny. I'm like, what? They're like, here's your drink, youth. Nah, I've put some stuff in it. But, like, here's your drink. I'm like, alright. So, he spoke to me then, but saying, like, these drinks are expensive. Five pounds a drink, what not? Six pounds, you're at an event, you know how it is, you know. So, I, like, I ain't gonna, I ain't one to waste. So, I drank my drink, whatever. And then, Bit later on that night, start getting a bit of a bit of a wobbly leg feeling, a bit of a fuzz in the belly, and then it was just like all I remember is Kevin and Perry flashbacks. You know what I'm saying? Eyes rolling, lights going. It was a beautiful night, a magical time. <laughs> the way that people are at these rows is hilarious. It's like everyone's your best friend, even though you've only known five minutes. You're having the most like, in-depth conversations and you're just like, oh, yeah, mate, you're fucking ace. I remember there was this one black guy, because it's been raining on this night, but there was like a, this event that I went to, it's in a shut-down warehouse in Digbeth. I think it's called Custer Factory or something like that. It's a popular place, like, it's massive, a lot of people go there. And there's like an outdoor bit with like a marquee set up, so it's not really outdoors, but obviously there's gaps in between, because it's like a courtyard on a building with a marquee in it and there's little gaps where it's a bit wet on the sides and whatnot. 
and we're all crowding around this puddle and it's just, I'm just lost by the way at this point because that's what I do when I go to the raves I just make new friends and I disappear end of the night I get back to everyone and they're like where the fuck are you being like I thought you was dead or something I'm like no mate I've just been with my new pals a lot of the time get taken over by the black people I don't know whether it's something they just like me yeah, I, I don't know whether it's because of my Jew blood or what but a lot of my brothers at the raves whatever um, so yeah that happens and where was I yeah I'm chilling with this black dude round the side of a sorry I shouldn't put a pronoun on it yeah, we're going to skip that. I'm chilling with his geezer. Never met him in my life. Just a couple of minutes been talking to him, whatever. And he started, because I've got an Alpine Stars t-shirt on it. Never really crosses in my life. I'm fucking shit. I won't even do a jump on a push bike, like. But he sees the t-shirt. He obviously knows the scene and that. So he starts getting down low and doing these, like, crusher movements. Like, dee, dee, dee. And I'll start fucking absolutely creasing myself. Start doing it back, and he's just fucking laughing, man. But yeah, I'm pretty shit because I, I don't know if it's because I smoke a lot of doji or what. But I have flashbacks through throughout the night, just little bits. Everyone sort of remembers their own bits. That's why it's good to go in like groups of ten people, because when you're discussing it over the next couple of days, you get a little trinkets of information coming back to you. But yeah, I got some pictures from that night, so I'll stick that up right here. I heard Joey Diaz say this, yeah, but there's a certain part of yourself, your pride, yeah, your innocence, that the minute something goes up your nose or whatever, that's gone. And I think you should try hold on to that shit as long as possible, man. Especially while you're, like, in your formative years. A lot of people start dabbling on these drugs way too young, man. And it's not necessarily going to fuck their heads up but it's going to give them maybe dependencies that they don't want to have as they get older or a lot. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just think about what you're doing and shit. I was nearly 20 before I fucking bothered trying anything like that. And I've only been to, I'd say, five events in my lifetime and I don't really care to go to another one. I mean, it is ace. It is like the best time in the world when you're there, but the reason why I'm not down for the, that kind of stuff and those kind of drugs is... You don't know what's in them. And um, there's all this synthetic shit they're making nowadays, yeah. You hear about fentanyl, car fentanyl. Who's to say that someone wants to fuck you over? Like, I know that there's most people that are making these drugs want return customers, yeah, so they ain't trying to kill them. But say there's just one cunt out there that just wants to put a grain of that shit in there. Fuck you up big time, man. And not even that, or if it's like not real... MD, it's that GMPV or fucking MDPV or something. The actual drug itself is pretty unhar like it's pretty unharmful, like it's pretty sound. There was a documentary I watched two days as well, two days ago about uh, it's a virus one about how they destroyed one of the vital ingredients in fucking ecstasy, so they replaced it with something else, and that something else they're replacing it with only had like one oxygen molecule in it when it should have two so it makes a difference into how fastly the drug digests into your system so people take this new drug that's different to ecstasy because they can't make it the same way because the government destroyed the shit to make the shit <sighs> right yeah and it doesn't kick in so they take another one and another one and then they have three hit the brain at once and it's something like it's called a serotonin sort of overdose your body can't break it down and you just have whatever and you die or like you get fucked up off it but I've had mates they're just mad on it like they'll take four or five in a night well I'll be there like with my half then end of the night take another half but I think my problem is I'm too scared to take it so I don't take enough and then I'll come down off that level that you saw everyone else is on so I don't really enjoy it because like, a couple of times I've just been stood there like all weirded out and like some birds come up to me like that I know through like another mate and it's like what is up with you and I'm just stood there a minute and it's like I was trying to talk to him 
And my mates just come up to me like, I, come on, bro, what the fuck? Like, get you away from them, like, splash on water in my face. And uh, five minutes later, I'm back to normal. But this same time as well, I've gone to get myself a water. Obviously, it gets hot in the raves. It gets hot. It's an indoor one. It's a sweat box. I think there's one called the basement. Yeah, and I'm there leaning at the bar trying to get some water. And I see the St. John's geezer coming up towards me. And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. Like, leave me. And he's like, OK, I'll leave you. But I was just thinking, he's going to come up, put some bad voodoo on my head and that, uh, and fuck me up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kept him away. But another time, I was on about my mate overdoing shit. We're at this Creamfields festival. And he's added a stack of pills and he's wrapped them up like purple violets to last him or whatever. And he's dropped it on the night time and he can't find it for shit. And it's like condensation out in the morning, you know, the grass is damp. So he ends up finding his stuff in the morning. And it's all just turned into one paste. It's a pink paste like from where they're all broken down and just fell back to mush, yeah. And he's not one to waste either, apparently. So he's there making his own bombs out of it. A bit of this, a bit of that, whatever. I think he was putting like ketamine in them and stuff like that as well, but complete wrong. It meant me a little package, I ate it as well, just because I was in the festival zone and that. It's completely stupid, like I didn't know how much he'd put in it or whatever. Wouldn't do something like that again. Um, but yeah, later on that day after he's at his homemade bombs and stuff, I think he might have had two of them or something. He's got all the rest left, and there must be about ten pills worth of paste there. And he's wrapped it up in a big bomb, and he's about to eat it. My mate's bitch slapped it out of his hands, like, you fucking idiot, like, what's, what's the matter with you, man? So he didn't do that. But this same day, I think, whatever, we've met a load of lads from Birmingham, and they're all big on the ketamine, they loved it. And we're there, in their tent, they've got the big tent, so we're all sat around in a circle just chilling. And this is the time that I involuntarily took a, a large amount of ketamine. Because that shit ain't good, it's a cheap, nasty, dirty drug yet. Whether people will get nice effects off it or not, I don't know, I don't care. But you shouldn't take something that costs a tenner a gram, because the quality is probably, it's probably worth a tenner a gram, that's why you're paying so cheap for it. That's on like street price as well, so if you get it bulk, you probably get it for like five or a gram. It's just dirty. <laughs> I'd never touch it, never again. And I never voluntarily touched it in the first place. We were drinking vodka and uh, passing the bottle around, you know, having a few swigs, pass it on, whatever. It's probably about eight of us, and they've done some it, like, so they've emptied a load of gear into the bottom of the vodka bottle. And like they told everyone really clearly that's what they've done. But my problem is I don't pay attention when people are talking. A lot of time I'm pretty shit at listening. So the book is going round. I'm not really drinking much because it's pretty early in the morning. It's probably like twelve o'clock. And it comes round again and again. I think I even missed a turn. So I'm thinking, right, oh, vodka's getting down to about that much now. I best catch up a bit because all these are going to be on a nice level. I'm behind. So I smash off the bottle. Everyone's just there like, whoa, ah, no. Telling me that like, you just drank that and that uh, that's gonna be where all the stuff sat in the bottle. I'm not like, you're joking. Probably should have went and sicked it up real quick or something. But I just sort of like, you know, laughed it off like as if you didn't tell me, so like, we did tell ya. We put it no like, But if I was doing that, yeah, I'd just make sure double clear that everyone knew. I knew there was quite a big group of us and like some were over talking on over other people so you couldn't really tell what's going on. But I just consumed a lot of shit and I've never done it before and like next minute I oh, know I just fucking slumped down. I blink and I wake up, I'm in my tent. I'm so all, all all in a blanket and that like, I've only got a little pop up tent, one man I'm like, what the fuck? Where is everyone? So Unzip the tent, look around. Where the fuck? Where is everyone? We're just having a laugh. A blink. I'm asleep in my tent. I think surely I can't have just gone to sleep. But I wouldn't have done that. Cause I, I forgot that I'd actually had the stuff in the drink. 
So I'll go in and visit the big tent where everyone was. Sure as shit, no one's there. Oh, alright. <laughs> Festivals, obviously, don't have the best connection sometimes. Can't get hold of no one. Oh, sorry, I didn't have my phone the whole time. I've gone to this festival and uh, I've left it at my mate's house. Because I've gone to his and we got the boys from his, whatever. But I've left my fucking phone at his house, so no contact. I even lost him on the first night. I was getting through the gates, we got separated. But that's another story, I'll tell you that another time. Um, but yeah. I just decided I was going to go out on my one and have a good night because I thought you ain't going to try and find no one at these festivals for shit. And I tried getting into a couple of people's Facebook and that, but the internet just was not having it in the middle of this field. So I was like, fuck it. I tried for like an hour. By the way, I fell asleep at 12. I missed the detail out. I fucking woke up about half eight, nine. So I just sparked out for the entire day. Just like, I missed the festival and it's on the last day. So everything was shutting up at like 11 o'clock in the night. But like, yeah, I look for half an hour, it's getting about nine, and I'm thinking, fuck it, I'm just going to go and enjoy myself. So I go into one of the big tents and that, there I am, raving away, met some people and that, probably took some more drugs. And then um, I look to my right, and I just see one of the lads I was with, because he was wearing like some proper funky shirt. I'm like, fucking no way, man, I found them. So I just wiggle on over to him, like, lads, what happened? Oh, he's back! Everyone's getting around. He's fucking back! Like, how'd you find this one? So, why? What happened? They just explain everything to me. Like, yeah, you got Ketty off your little head. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. How dare you do this to me without my consent, man? Terrible friends. Yeah, I had to cut it off earlier because as I looked to my left, you see me on the video, I look left or right, whatever it was. My dad's literally stood. Oh, on the other side of the gate, he's come around the front side of the house and he's just stood literally a couple of metres away from me fucking listening to what I'm saying and that and it's funny because he don't actually know these stories yet but it's quite fitting so I guess that he will see these videos at some point down the line yeah but um, yeah I'll wrap it up there for this one but we're going to do a part two, I'll film that in the morning I'm out on the streets at the minute um, just filming a homeless video I'm going to go try and find Nathan get to do a little interview with me so jump over to that one and watch that one after because it'll be uploaded about the same time and uh, yeah just before I go I got this last one in it so at the first rave I ever went to it was about the same time that that song uh, Feed Them To The Lions was in the chart oh, so it comes on you know it is everyone's getting a bit of a bob on I'm doing a little up and down jump whatever getting a bit carried away like I tend to and uh, a bit of beer spills out the side of the can and starts getting on the outside of the can, you know, it gets a little bit slippery and I'm carrying on jumping around as I am, as I am. The fucking beer slips out of my hand, was flying through the air and I'm watching it in slow motion. It just bounces off this hench geezer, Tyrone, that drips all down his lovely shirt, he must have been wearing some fancy gear, I don't know, it looked expensive. But he was mad, he was looking around like this. And I just think, I gotta go and tell him. So I walk up to him and say, bro, oh, I am so sorry, like I did not mean to do that. I was just getting into the song. The can slipped out of my hand. And he's like, you know what, bro, it's cool. But that's how you deal with them situations, man. You wrong someone and it's an accident, you go and tell him. Cause if he'd, uh, if I didn't say anything and he'd have spotted me out the corner of his eye thinking that geezer looks suspicious like he just did that to me. I'd have probably got bounced up, folded in half, but yeah, that's a wrap for this one. I'll do the part two tomorrow morning, take it easy. Royce, roller, roller.